Welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Here now is your host, Chad Ammond, President and CEO of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. Hello and welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections. I'm your host, President of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce, Chad Ammon. We are delighted today to have on the show Lacey Parker. Lacey is the Executive Director of Community Options, Inc., and they have an office in downtown Greensburg. Uh, Lacey, thanks for being on the show. Uh, thanks for having me, Chad. I'm delighted to be here this morning with you. Well, we are glad to have you on the show because your organization is making an impact in Westmoreland County and all over the country, yes. uh, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's start it off with uh, a little bit about you. How did you get to uh, uh, community options and uh, what's your background? Sure. So um, I'm originally from South Central Pennsylvania. Uh, I was born in a small town called Waynesboro. Um, and I went to Shippensburg University uh, and got my undergrad degree in psychology. Um, I had various jobs in schools, mostly for children with autism. And about six years ago, my husband and I decided to move uh, over to Westmoreland County. And I had an interview at Community Options as an entry level staff. Um, for a direct support professional. Um, I got the job and from that point to now I worked my way up through several positions and eventually became the executive director of community options. Very good. Well w with with my role at the chamber we're working on the comprehensive plan and so mm -hmm. uh, you know one of the things that we are talking about all the time is drawing people into Westmoreland County. I have mm -hmm. to go down a bunny trail right off the bat and uh, what, what drew you to Westmoreland County and what do you like about Westmoreland Westmoreland County. Well, um, my husband's family actually was from Westmoreland County, okay. so we moved back here to live on some land that his family had. Um, but we actually love Westmoreland County, the Yaukagani River. We live right by that, and we also are living right by the bike trail. Um, the Great Allegheny Passageway. So, um, you know, we love those things about Westmoreland County. There's a lot to do. Greensburg is a wonderful city. I um, mean, there's a lot of restaurants and a lot of things to get into with your family. Right, right. Well, we, we just had a uh, chamber event down at the Performance Kayak mm -hmm. uh, along the uh, Great Allegheny Passage on the Yaukagani. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a beautiful, it is a beautiful place. But, well, we're, we're here to take today to talk about uh, Community Options, Inc. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, what, what, does, what does Community Options do? And, and I, I looked on the website, uh, it's, an, it's a national organization, correct? Yes, yes. So we're currently in 11 states, um, and Community Options' mission at its core is to support adults with developmental disabilities lead a meaningful life. So um, as you know, we were founded in 1989, and the reason why Community Options was born and our CEO, Robert Stack, um, wanted to do something about the institutionalization of adults with disabilities. Um, you know, so years and years and years ago, when a child had disabilities, they were in, the parents were encouraged to send their children to an institution, and there they would live for the rest of their life. So we uh, were created or founded so that we could offer an alternative. Um, so instead of adults living in an institution, they can now live work and lead meaningful lives in their own communities outside of locked doors um, you know getting jobs and uh, experiencing the same things that you and I do every day and take for granted. When you say some of the the challenges that these uh, disabled adults have, mm -hmm. what are some of those? That would describe those to the to the listeners. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, some of the adults. In order to get into our program, you have to have an intellectual developmental disability. Um, so, you know, in school, these are the children that might be in different classrooms, or they they need a little bit more support to learn their academics. Um, um, those could be paired with physical disabilities. You know, some of our individuals have a couple of different diagnoses. Uh, maybe they're in a wheelchair. Maybe they, their gait is off. They can't walk too great. Um, and then also there's a lot of dual diagnosis, so a lot of mental health diagnoses as well. Um, so these adults, they need support uh, physically, emotionally, um, just to live in the community. And that level of support can look different depending on the adult. So some individuals need more support, some need less. Um, it's all individualized. Everything is unique to each adult that we support. 
Hmm. Well, whenever I was on the website and uh, exploring community options, I, I saw that you have, I think it was 10 offices, maybe in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and, and you have uh, offices all around the country. Yes. So do all of the offices offer the same programs? Generally, yes. We all work under the same mission uh, to support adults with developmental disabilities, lead a meaningful life, but each state looks a little different. So some states we offer traumatic brain injury services. Uh, that's something that's really big in the state of New York. Um, some states we work with children. Um, in Maryland, I know we have a couple houses that we support adults and children. So once uh, they turn 18, they can transition to our adult services. But here in Pennsylvania, we mostly stick to residential supports, employment supports, and non-traditional day services. Um, so that's kind of an alternative to your vocational workshops that exist in the county that a lot of people are familiar with. So that would be like uh, Clillian Heights, Yes, right? yes, okay. Clillian Heights or the Blind Association. So we offer day services that's all community-based. So they go out into the community, they make friends, they volunteer, they seek employment, um, and instead of going to a workshop and staying there for the day. Okay, so do you, do you provide some of our employers with uh, people that have mental and, and physical disabilities. I mean, I, I, I know that even when I've got, I go to, to Giant Eagle, mm -hmm. there, are, there are clearly some, some folks that mm -hmm. have uh, some, some developmental disabilities. Are, is that an example of what you guys provide? Yes, that is an example. So we'll go and try to partner with different organizations, companies, um, to for them to employ the individuals that we support. And what we ask is for them to find unique niches for our individuals to fulfill. So an employer has a lot of unfulfilled needs that we can go in with the adults we support and they can pay them to do those random tasks that nobody else is really doing or it's not part of their workload. So it kind of works out for everyone, for the employer, and for the adults that we support. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Hometown Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. I'm your host, Chad Ammon, president of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. We're talking with Lacey Parker. She is the executive director of Community Options, Inc. Uh, Lacey, when we talked about uh, the, the Community Options, Inc. Uh, footprint across the nation, um, we, we didn't really talk about how long you have been in Westmoreland County. Sure. So and we came to Westmoreland County in 2012. We opened one house in that year. Since that time, we now have 18 houses operating. We have 19 uh, owned currently. We're about to fill the 19th house, and we're working on developing three more. So in that short time frame, we've really expanded into Westmoreland County. Wow. And so if, if there is a listener out here uh, that uh, is listening to the show right now, and they say, wow, this would be a great fit for someone in my family or someone that, uh, that I know. How would they go about uh, getting the services if, if they are interested? Well, they could always contact me directly um, at my office. I have my phone number and my email address that I think will be shared. Um, but they also can reach out to their caseworker as well through Wixi and ask them for help to obtain the services. That so we you offer. do have a, uh, you have a connection with Wixie. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, since we since we brought it up, that uh, that that website is c o m o p dot org. That's com op dot org, uh, and the phone number is seven two four two two one six one one nine seven two four two two one six one one nine. And if you want to reach Lacey uh, via email, it's Lacey l a c i e dot Parker at com op dot org. Uh, Lacey, let's talk a little bit more about some of the services that you offer, and, and let's give an example of um, maybe a, 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 a program that, that you are so proud of that, uh, that you've seen such an influence with one of your clients, or I, I don't know mm -hmm. if you call them clients, or... Uh, we usually call them individuals. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we opened 
let's say our first house that we opened, we had a young gentleman move in. He was living in a hospital. He had been living there for several months. Um, so on a, a ward up in uh, Western Psych, uh, you know, that's a locked unit. They don't get to go outside. They don't get to choose when they eat or what they eat or what they do or or go anywhere really or make friends so we opened our first house back in 2012 Um, that individual had free access to his entire house he was able to go into his own refrigerator pick what he wanted to eat and eat when he wanted to eat and that's really important and I think something that we take for granted that we're able to just go and open our refrigerator door. Um, So I'm really proud that we're able to offer that freedom to the individuals that we support. A lot of the individuals come to us from locked units like that. Um, So just having that ability to walk around the house, um, get a snack, go to the store, make a purchase, go swimming. Um, Some of the individuals that we support are on baseball leagues, so they get to go and play baseball, or they go to the Y. Um, They go and they hang out uh, with their friends and their family freely without having to ask permission or without having to get a home pass, you know, for the weekend. It's just like you and I live our lives, and, and I'm very proud that we're able to do that. So what is the typical age of your individuals? Well, anybody from the age of 18 up can come and join our program but the majority of the individuals that we support here in this region seem to be in their 30s Uh, we have a lot of individuals right in that age group so is that a region-wide southwestern Pennsylvania Mm -hmm. uh, what what are some of the major problems that are you you said in New York uh, brain injury Mm -hmm. is a is a primary problem Mm -hmm. what are some of the major problems in Westmoreland County in southwestern Pennsylvania Uh, well a lot of the individuals that we support Uh, They do have that dual diagnosis, so they have the IDD diagnosis and then a mental health diagnosis. So a problem that we run into a lot is finding um, people that are able to understand that and provide supports, whether it be medical support um, or just community support or employment support. So that's a major problem is educating the community, taking away that stigma of a group home. Um, You know, when we go into neighborhoods and we purchase a house, you wouldn't be able to tell that we are there, Um, but the neighbors do. They catch on. You know, they see the the traffic, the staff changing at shift, so they might become apprehensive or scared or wonder what we're going to do. Um, And we work really hard to just be a part of that community and be neighborly um, and make sure everybody knows that we're just the same as any other adult out there. So when you go into a community, you will uh, basically purchase the house Mm -hmm. or have the house, and then that individual will live in that house, but you will have uh, employees from community options that will come in and help that person. Yep, provide the support 24 hours a day. We have a, a car, so the staff will come in, they'll help with all the cleaning, the household maintenance, they'll help the individual get ready and plan their day. Um, we'll take them to their appointments, to the store, out to have dinner with their family, whatever it is that they're choosing to do. Um, and we staff typically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's, you know, you see the staff coming at the different eight-hour shifts in the community. And, and how is that How is that funded? Is it with uh, funded through uh, health insurance or it's state through, funding? It's uh, through a waiver, Medicaid, Medicare waivers. Um, so an individual that receives the services typically has to have um, what's called a consolidated waiver. Um, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people waiting to receive um, that type of funding in order to receive services and supports to support them throughout their life. We're talking with Lacey Parker, Executive Director of Community Options, Inc. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Hometown Classics 107.1 WHJB. We'll be right back after these messages. This is Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. If you have a suggestion for a topic or if your nonprofit organization would like to be featured on this program, call us during regular business hours at 724-216-1200.
Welcome back. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Hometown Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. I'm your host, Chad Ammon, president of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. Our guest today is Lacey Parker. Lacey is the executive director of Community Options, Inc. Community Options, Inc. is in Greensburg. Uh, If you want to visit their website, it's comop dot org c-o-m-o-p dot org uh, and if you want to get a hold of them it's 724-221-6119 uh, Lacey before we went to break we were talking about uh, the impact that you have on individuals with Community Options uh, Inc and one of the things that that we know uh, firsthand in the in the county is that workforce is oftentimes a struggle for not just uh, employers like uh, manufacturers and things like that, but it's also a struggle for uh, a not-for-profit organization. So, uh, how many people do uh, do you employ in in Westmoreland County? Uh, currently, we employ about 160 people, um, and that's full-time, part-time, and sub-employees. Um, and those a uh, majority of those individuals are direct support professionals. So they are the people that are working in the homes or out in the community directly with the individuals that we support to support them and living their own meaningful life. So 160 employees, part-time mm-hmm. and full-time. That's, mm-hmm. that's a... That's a that's a significant employer, yeah. yeah. And, and that's just in Westmoreland County, not mm-hmm. all of southwestern Pennsylvania. Correct. Right. Wow. Uh, Well, do you, I I would imagine with 160 employees, you probably have some current uh, employment opportunities available. Let's, let's talk about those. Uh, You, you you can maybe potentially recruit some people that, uh, that would maybe work for you. Yeah, that would be wonderful. We are always hiring. um, And you can always come and work for us full time, part time. We offer very flexible scheduling. um, And it's a really great job to have um, because you're not just going to work and sitting behind a desk or answering the phones. You are being active. You're out in the community. You're making a difference. You're, you're getting to do things uh, that you would do on the weekends for fun. Uh, you know, you take the individuals swimming to the beach, to play basketball, to the movies, going grocery shopping, having barbecues out back. So it's really a great job to have. And uh, it it just it 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 means a lot you know i think that you could go home after a day of work and be proud of what you've done and, and that you really made an impact and changed the world for the better it seems to a certain degree like being a parent yes right? Right? yeah <laughs> a, a parent a friend a yeah. mentor um very rewarding so what are some of the skills that your employees would need to to work at uh, a, a community options inc Uh, Well, compassion, I think, would be the number one skill. Um, Everything else can be taught. You know, you would have to, in order to work for us, you would have to um, have a high school diploma and a license. Everything else we can teach you. Um, You know, it's a a benefit to be able to cook and to do uh, some paperwork, uh, to be able to work on the computer a little bit, to do the documentation part. Um, But we offer all the training that is required um, of the position. So if you come in and you're an excellent cook, that's a bonus, know for us because we're prepared to train you and to work with you to to cook those healthy meals so do you one of the things that we're seeing with our 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 workforce uh, issues is that sometimes you get a, a person that retires and they say well I've retired for two weeks and now I'm bored. I want to get back into the workforce, but I ne- don't necessarily want to work 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, do you hire any um, part-time retirees? We would love to hire all the part-time retirees. You know, there's a lot of great uh, experiences that those retirees can bring to the table, and I'm sure that um, our individuals would be happy to work with them and, and uh, you know, to be able to bestow their wisdom upon them. That would be excellent. So how would one go about getting a, an interview with Community Options? They could always call um, our office and ask to speak to Riley. He is our recruiter, um, and he'll schedule schedule you an interview. You could go online. We have job postings up on Indeed um, for direct support professional and you could apply through there. Um, or you could just come and walk in our door and we would give you an interview right there that day. 
Well, that website is comop.org, C-O-M-O-P dot org, or you can give the call to 724-221-6119. That's 724-221-6119. Lacey, let's let's shift gears for a second. Um, You obviously are uh, an organization that is doing um, great work in our community, helping people with uh, mental and physical health disabilities. Uh, but you probably need to make sure that you're raising money as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what what are some of the events that uh, that you offer it to the community to, to potentially raise some funds? Yes, yeah, so we hold an annual uh, 5K called Cupid's Chase. We actually held our first Cupid's Chase last year at La Trobe. Um, it was a success for us. We had about 60 runners, um, and that... 5K is not only to raise funds to support the work that we do, but it's also to raise awareness about our organization and the individuals that we support. Um, So we're absolutely looking to make that race bigger this year. Um, I'm really excited to see what the turnout will be. Cupid's Chase, is it going to happen around Valentine's Day? Yes, yep. I didn't want to make sure that I was... uh, um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's in val- around Valentine's Day. It's the mm-hmm. weekend closest. So yes, it you know you think of having right. a 5K in February, you think it's cold, but I assure you, the last two years it was 60 degrees uh, right. on the day of the race. It's been uh, really wonderful, actually, to have such nice weather in February. So it it is July. Uh, so if somebody wanted to become involved with Cupid's Chase, how what 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 could they do? What do you need? Uh, you know, you obviously have a, about what eight months, eight mm-hmm. months uh, to to the event. So mm-hmm. this is probably the time where the work is really being done. Yep. You know, the day yeah. of the event is that that's whenever all of the uh, all of the work has been done up to that point. Yeah. So um, you can be involved. Um, to whatever extent that you would feel comfortable with. Of course, uh, donating is a way to be involved. Running or walking the race is a way to be involved. But we also have what is called the Community Options Business Advisory Council. Um, And that is a way for you to, if let's say you have experience or you have some great ideas on how this race could be a success, you could become involved with us in that capacity. And you would just contact me and, you know, we have meetings uh, every quarter and, and soon they'll increase to every month um, where we talk about different ideas that we have not only for 5k but in general you know for community options of how to be involved in the community and how to be an active contributor in that community are there any other options for community members to become involved in community options I mean, we're always looking for volunteers. We're always looking for people to come and uh, help us out and to whatever extent. So, yeah, I mean, if you call and you say you want to be involved, we will definitely find a way for you to be involved with us. Well, let's talk a little bit about some collaboration that you you have with other organizations. You, you mentioned Wixie, and we mm-hmm. talked about uh, Clelian Heights, and we talked mm-hmm. about the Blind Association. Are 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 these organizations at least working together to provide a, a full array of, of services to the community? And how, how are you doing that? Mm-hmm. I mean, absolutely. All the organizations that you mentioned, you know, we're all in it for the same reasons. We want to support adults with disabilities, live a meaningful life just like you and I. So, you know, we do do some collaboration. We work together. Um, we also work extensively with the dual diagnosis treatment team here in Westmoreland County. Um, and, and, you know, we just come together. We come to the table uh whenever there's problems or whenever there's not problems and figure out how we can best, uh, you know, support the individuals and the community so that everybody can win and everybody can, uh, you know, be an active participant and give back. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Hometown Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. I'm your host, Chad Ammon, president of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. We're talking with Lacey Parker, executive director of Community Options, Inc. Uh, Lacey, let's let's round it out, the, 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 the rest of the interview, with some uh, maybe visionary uh, questions. Uh, if, if you were sitting here a year from now and you were celebrating what was a great year for Community Options, what would it be? 
Sure. So I think a year from today, my goal would be to open an additional four houses in the Westmoreland County. And with that, those houses opening, I'd be able to support up to eight additional adults with disabilities. Uh, that would be very successful for me. I'd also be able to hire um, at least 20 or 30 more staff. Um, that, in addition to a successful Cupid's Chase, uh, would be very successful for me. Um, I mean, last year we had 60 runners. We're hoping to at least double that, so 120, and I don't think that sounds too hard to accomplish. Right, right. Well, I- and also I think that we, the listeners would want to know, what is your organization most proud of? I mean, what you, you do a lot of, of, of things, maybe behind the scenes that some people don't necessarily realize. But what what would you be most proud of? I think, you know, the organization would be most proud of the fact that we are an active member of uh, getting individuals out of institutions and into their community. That's really the reason that the organization was founded, um, to help with that deinstitutionalization. And it's definitely what we work for every day to advocate for the rights of adults with disabilities. Okay. Well, Well, is there anything else that you want the listeners to know about Community Options, Inc.? Oh, well, I mean, (laughs) I think Community Options really does uh, very important work here in the community. I think that, you know, if you see us in your community, you know, we are there just as you would be. Um, You know, we want the same opportunities for the adults that we support as everyone else has. Um, And we're willing to work with you and, and just as hard as anybody else to make this possible. Well, Lacey Parker, Executive Director of Community Options, Inc. Lacey, thank you very much for the the great work that you're doing in uh, Westmoreland County, and thank your staff as well. I will, and thank you, Chad, so much for giving me the opportunity to be here and share uh, what we do with everyone. It's great to have you on the show. If you want to join, if you want to find out a little bit more about Community Options, Inc., jump on their website at comop.org, C-O-M-O-P dot org, uh, or give them a call at 724-221-6119. You've been listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Hometown Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Join us next week, same time, same place, for another edition of Westmoreland Community Connections. Thanks for listening, everyone. This has been Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings in and around Westmoreland County. Join us again next week on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB.